So now we'll use the same tool, that PD25, the corded voltmeter slash phasing meter. And I'll demonstrate using it to phase. Uh, this is going to be tool specific. So unlike some of the safety that Brent's talked about prior, this uh, function is going to be pretty specific to this tool and this tool only. Just because of the, the safety and the, the functionality of this tool. So Using it is going to be a little bit different from traditional phasing. Uh, with the accuracy of this tool, we can use it to phase on the capacitive test points. Capacitive phasing on, let's say, an analog tool, you know, you, you put it in a capacitive phase setting. And if you're in phase, you get no deflection of the needle. If you are out of phase, you get a strong deflection of the needle. This tool, with it being as accurate as it is, as, as good as uh, the job that it does, as it is, it's going to be able to pick up the differences between each elbow. And what I mean by that are the different, the very, very slight differences between the resistive values of each elbow if you've got capacitive test points. So each one of these elbows, although they're from the same manufacturer, they may have a different resistive value. Although they went through the same processes, maybe one's a little bit older than the other. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take phase to ground measurements. The reason we're going to do that, a couple different reasons, is we're going to verify first that the tool's working and that what we are testing is energized. Then the second reason is going to be because you're going to need that information later on. So also we're verifying that our head's in the game, like Brent spoke about earlier. So there's actually three reasons. So we're, like I said, we're going to want to remember these numbers. So on the first elbow, the capacitive test point, we see about 129 volts, 130 volts. We're going to go to the next one, and we're going to take that reading, and we see about 127 volts. So the reason it's important to remember those numbers is, for one, if you're in phase, the number is going to be that difference that you're going to see, not zero. So like with your uh, traditional phasing meters, you would see zero if you're in phase. This device is going to actually show you that difference. So we saw about three volts difference, two volts difference. So when we go phase to phase, we should expect to see that number. So we get that number close to zero. We see one volt. So we know we're in phase. If we're out of phase, Instead of being close to zero like that, the number would be uh, that 1.72 multiplier out of phase. So you would see like somewhere around 350, 370 volts.